Hello, my name is Gary Pace. I'm a professional engineer in CWI out of Katy, Texas. Um, this is an introduction to welding metallurgy, stainless steel. As always, I chopped it from some other sources and built it into this PowerPoint presentation. Hope it works for you. As I do every uh, YouTube video that I put together, I tell you where I snagged most of the material out of the public domain, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, um, can do the can Canadian deuterium uranium nuclear reactor people, and the U.S. Army, and I've also pilfered some stuff from some uh, U.S. Navy manuals, so just thought I'd throw that out there, let everybody know where I got most of my material from, and then I've just kind of added on and gone from there. Stainless steels. Stainless steels are stainless because their chromium content, minimum of stainless steels. The main alloying element in stainless steels is chromium, which is added to steel in sufficient quantity to provide corrosion resistance. Other alloying elements are present to improve specific properties. Stainless steels are usually classified as ferritic, martensitic, and austenitic. The ferritic steels are characterized by a chromium to carbon ratio which does not allow hardening by heat treatment. The chromium and carbon contents vary from 11.5 to 27 percent and 0.1 percent to 2 percent respectively. Martensitic stainless steels contain 11.5 to 18 percent chromium and 0.15 to 1.2 percent carbon. Nickel may also be added to the martensitic type. Both the ferritic and martensitic stainless steels are ferromagnetic and offer very good resistance to oxidation and corrosion. Ferrite is present at high and low temperatures in ferritic steels. Therefore, ferritic steels are not hardenable by heat treatment. The martensitic stainless steels undergo the same phase transformation as the carbon and low alloy steels during heat treatment. The austenite transforms upon rapid cooling to martensite. Stainless steels. Iron alloyed with greater than 12% chromium is a stainless steel. A chromium rich oxide forms a continuous layer on the surface to prevent corrosion in ambient conditions. Classified by their microstructure, you have four types martensitic, ferritic, austenitic, and duplex. Duplex is a combination of austenite and ferrite in the microstructure. The engineering properties of stainless steels are resistance to discoloration, causing it to be stainless, corrosion resistance, high temperature oxidation resistance, wide range of strength and ductility, generally good fabricability, and good weldability. As I said before on the previous slide, there's four classifications of stainless steels. Well, five if we count precipitation hardening. Um, classified by microstructure, you've got martensitic, which is the 400 level, ferritic, which is the 200 level. You've got austenitic, which is the 200 and 300 um, level. And then you've got duplex and pre precipitation hardenable stainless steels. Um, all of these have their strengths and weaknesses, consequently that's why they were developed. And a lot of times people ask about stainless steel and you ask, well, what kind is it? And they're like, I don't know, it's stainless. Well, that doesn't narrow it down very much, but generally there's a half a dozen different kinds that, well, depending on your application, I say generally a half a dozen different kinds, but a lot of times you'll run into an austenitic and occasionally a martensitic. Oil and gas you'll run into a duplex and sometimes you'll run into precipitation noble, hardenable. But anyways, that's the classifications of stainless steel. Here's a list of uh, alloying elements and their effects. You've got austenite formers, nickel, manganese, carbon, nitrogen, copper, and cobalt. You put these guys in an iron um, alloy and they're going to form austenite. Ferrite formers are aluminum, titanium, vanadium, chromium, molybdenum, niobium, and silicon. 
So depending on what your mix is, what the percentage of the alloying elements are in the alloy is going to is going to tell you what you get as far as a microstructure. Is it going to be ferritic? Is it going to be austenitic? Is it going to be martensitic? Just depends on what you've uh, put into the the mixture into the alloy. The 2 to 300 series of stainless steels is known as austenitic. This is the type of steel is very tough and ductile in the as welded condition. Therefore, it is ideal for welding and requires no annealing under normal atmospheric conditions. The most well-known types of steel in this series are 302, 304. They are commonly called 18-8 because they are composed of 18% chromium and 8% nickel. The chromium nickel steels are most widely used and are normally non-magnetic. So when you're talking about stainless steel for the most part, you're talking about austenitic stainless steels. Kitchen sinks and stuff like that is pretty much austenitic stainless steel. You're going to hear a lot of vocabulary when you're dealing with stainless steels. You're going to hear austenitic, ferritic, duplex, martensitic. That tells you what kind of stainless steel it is. And just because it's that somebody says it's stainless steel doesn't mean it's a specific type. They might not know what they're talking about when they're saying it's a stainless steel. Yes, it's a stainless steel, but what type of stainless steel is it? So, and even within the 300s, there's a big difference between 304, 308, 316, 321, 317. All of these have a different, they're more or less the same, but they've got different amounts of elements, alloying elements thrown in to give them certain properties. Maybe one was designed for making pipe for food service conditions. You know, let's say pumping ketchup through it or something. Something that's very acidic and then that stuff is, you know, really good for that one specific um, application. Whereas it might not be great for another. But anyways, that's the basis of austenitic stainless steels. The two big things for austenitic is the 18% chrome and the 8% nickel. Austenitic stainless steels. The austenitic stainless steels are in essence alloys of chromium, nickel, and iron with carbon content up to 0.25% maximum. Titanium, vanadium, and molybdenum are also added for specific purposes. Titanium or columbium, niobium, are used for stabilizing the austenitic stainless steels by preventing the precipitation of chromium carbide at elevated temperatures. Titanium and columbium form a stable carbide. Quenching the austenitic stainless steel in water from above 1,000 degrees C, 1,830 degrees F, also suppresses the precipitation of chromium carbide, thereby stabilizing the austenitic structure. Austenitic stainless steels. Series 200, chrome nickel manganese. Series 300, chrome nickel. Hardenable by cold working only. Best high temperature strength and corrosion resistance. Best low temperature impact properties. Paramagnetic. Um, hardenable by cold working only means it's like the old Conan movies where they'd make a sword, you know, they get it red hot and then they dip it in the water by quenching. You can't do that with austenitic stainless steels. It is what it is. There's no phase transformation. There's no allotropic phase transformation like there is from um, face center cubic to body centered cubic to body center tetragonal, whatever. There's none of that in austenitic stainless steels. You heat it up red hot, it is face center cubic. You cool it down, it is face center cubic. So it is hardenable by cold working only. So, and it's got high temperature strength and corrosion resistance, and it's got really low temperature impact properties. That's why it's used for cryogenic purposes. And it's paramagnetic, which means if you cold work it a bunch, it'll kind of develop a magnetic, some magnetic properties. Uses of austenitic stainless steels. Austenitic steels are non-magnetic stainless steels that contain high levels of chromium and nickel and low levels of carbon. Austenitic stainless steels are known for their formability and resistance to corrosion and are the most widely used grade of stainless steel. Ferritic steels have a body-centered cubic BCC crystal structure. 
The austenitic range of stainless steels are defined by their face-centered cubic crystal structures. The FCC structure forms when a sufficient quantity of nickel is added to the alloy, 8 to 10 percent in a standard 18 percent chromium alloy. Austenitic stainless steels are non-magnetic and are not heat treatable. Austenitic stainless steels can be cold worked to improve hardness, strength, and stress resistance. Martensitic stainless steels, series 400, 4 to 6 percent chrome, hardenable by heat treatment. Good hardness, strength, and corrosion resistance at ambient temperatures. They're magnetic. Martensitic stainless steels, a good knife blade. You know, a good pocket knife blade is a martensitic stainless steel. It's got the corrosion resistance so it doesn't rust, but it's hard enough and got the martensite so it holds a good edge. Precipitation hardening martensitic stainless steels. Precipitation hardening stainless steels or hardenable chromium nickel alloys are classified as martensitic or semi-austenitic. They develop high strength and hardness through a variety of heat treatments. Used in aircraft parts and commonly viewed as bar alloys but are also available in flat roll products with very high strength to weight ratios. The martensitic precipitation hardening steels are used in aerospace, chemical, and petrochemical as well as food processing applications. Uses for precipitation hardening martensitic stainless steels. Retaining rings, spring holders, springs, chains, valves, gears, aircraft parts, pressure vessels, and seals. Uses of martensitic stainless steels. Medical tools, scalpels, razors, and internal clamps, cutting utensils, surgical and dental instruments, fasteners, springs and ball bearings, press plates, steam and gas turbines. So you, there's a pretty wide variety of things martensitic stainless steels are used for, but scalpels, razors, clamps, something you need strength and corrosion resistance for. Steam and gas turbines, it's right down there. Ferritic stainless steels. Series 400, up to 30% chrome, generally non-hardenable, typically have higher yield strength than austenitic stainless steels, maintains corrosion resistance after cold working, and they are magnetic. Ferritic stainless steels. Ferritic grades have been developed to provide a group of stainless steels to resist corrosion and oxidation and highly resistant to stress corrosion cracking. Ferritic stainless steels are magnetic but cannot be hardened or strengthened by heat treatment. They can be cold worked and softened by annealing. Ferritic stainless steels are generally more corrosive resistant than the martensitic grades but are mostly inferior to the austenitic grades. Like martensitic grades, these are straight chromium steels with no nickel. They are used for decorative trim, sinks, and automotive applications, particularly exhaust systems. Some of the literature I read on the evolution of ferritic stainless steels, it had to do with people wanting something that had strength and corrosion resistance, but they didn't want to pay for all that nickel. The price of nickel is cost prohibitive, so they wanted something with some corrosion resistance, but they didn't need all that nickel in there, and they didn't want to pay for the nickel. So they came up, some metallurgists came up with the ferritic stainless steel grade. Duplex alloy stainless steels. Duplex alloy stainless steels contain a mixture of austenite and ferrite in their structure and exhibit characteristics of both phases with higher strength and ductility. Nitrogen is added to the second generation duplex alloys and provides strength and improved weldability. Typical applications for duplex alloys are heat exchangers, tubes, pipes, pressure vessels, and tanks in the oil and gas and chemical processing industries. Sensitization of austenitic stainless steels. From 800 degrees to 1600 degrees F, um, chrome 23 carbon 6 particles form at the grain boundaries. Chrome drops from 18% to 12% or less than 12%. And then the grain, you get grain boundary corrosion. Stabilized or low C grades help this out. But basically, okay, the top you see the regular austenitic stainless steel grain. 
It's got its 18% chrome in there. It's corrosion resistant. Life is good. Well, let's say you weld on it or you heat up that piece of austenitic stainless steel. The chrome migrates from the grain boundary and starts to form chromium carbides. That's the chrome 23 carbon 6. The chrome, it hooks up with carbon and forms these little, I don't know, I kind of vision, envision them as little chocolate chips in a chocolate chip cookie dough. So you get these little chromium carbides, which are like little chocolate chip cookies, but they tie up all the chromium. They take all the chrome, and the chrome is what makes the austenitic stainless steel corrosion resistant. So you have these areas with no corrosion resistance. So then the grain boundaries um, rot out, basically. You get grain boundary corrosion. Um, the best way to deal with sensitization is stabilized or low carbon grades like 304L or 316L or 319L or whatever L. If it's got an L on it, you're going to probably get away from sensitization. Um, maximum of 0.1% carbon for standard grades, 304. Maximum of 0.4% carbon for L grades. Titanium, titanium or niobium additions form stable um, carbides. So this is something to think about, but and be cognizant of if you're if you're welding austenitic stainless steels and you're not using a L grade, and if it's the the weld is going to be at a high temperature for a very long period of time. This slide you can see an example of intergranular attack or sensitization on some 304 you can see the chromium depleted region and you see those little yellow dots those are all chromium carbide precipitates I kind of envi like I said I envision them as like little chocolate chips in a cookie dough so you've got these little chromium carbides in this matrix and all the chromium has been depleted from the grain boundary areas so you can see the weld metal has been rotted away in this view. You've got the top view and you've got the cross-sectional view on the, the right. kind of shows you what's happened. So the weld will just, the heat affected zone will just rot out. You'll be left with the weld. So just be, uh, be aware that this can happen and does happen and has happened and try and prevent it if at all possible. Okay, summary, stainless steels are stainless because of their chromium content. 10.5% gives them the resistance to wet corrosion and high temperature oxidation. And we also covered, you know, stainless steels are classified by their structures. Austenitic, ferritic, martensitic, and duplex are the main ones. There's a lot of little subcategories like precipitation hardening and whatnot that we covered in there. Um, so stainless steels, there's a whole world of this, and we just touched barely the edge of it. But hopefully this will give you a greater understanding of um, stainless steels, their uses, and maybe some of the vocabulary involved in stainless steels. Hope this was helpful. Any questions, comments? You guys know how to get a hold of me. Um, there's my website. My name's Gary Pace. I'm a CWI um, and a professional welding, professional engineer. Uh, I, my focus is on welding. So if you got any questions, I know some of you have sent me texts or emails and uh, asked questions. So feel free to do that. Sometimes I might not get back to you very quickly, but I will get back to you. All right. Take care. Have a nice day.